Hi, this is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. I'd like to show you some of the most exciting tools inside this software called the jQuery User Interface. Now, 90 Second Website Builder has hundreds of features and functions that make it easy to build a website, but some of my favorite are found in the jQuery set of tools, and I'm going to try and give you an overview of each of them that are shown here in this toolbox. Before we do, let me talk to you a little bit about the jQuery interface concept. jQuery tools are just like any other tools you pull out of the toolbox. You click on them and drag them onto the canvas to make some kind of an object appear on your website. But the jQuery tools are unique in many ways, not the least of being they're based on what's called a jQuery theme that applies to the whole page. Before we work with any of these objects, let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to right click on the canvas and go to Page Properties, and you'll see under the Page Properties Style tab, there's actually an area for a jQuery user interface theme. This is the theme that applies to this page, and so every jQuery object on the page will use this theme for its look or layout. Right now you'll see Cupertino because that's the default. But there are a number of themes that we could choose from in these thumbnails and use those instead as the jQuery theme for this page. Additionally, we could go to the theme manager and see another listing of all of these themes in a different way, as well as some of the themes that you will have made. Here are some that I've designed. When you click on edit, then you're presented with this interface on how to design your theme. In this video, I'm not going to go into how to make a theme because that's a good topic for another video, but you still need to know that the jQuery objects that we're going to be using in this video are picking up their look from the page theme. Let's pick one here called Excite Bike, and I'll show you what I mean. If I go to the jQuery accordion tool and drag it out onto the canvas, you'll see that it has a particular look. Well, this is that theme that I just chose. If we go back to the page properties and set it back to the default, which is Cupertino, the object picks up that look. For now, let me show you what these objects do. Since we have the jQuery accordion here, we'll start with that one. This is just a great way to make navigation or a very efficient way to show content on your website. An accordion tool is something that allows you to put objects inside a content area. So let's go get the image tool and I'll show you how this works. And put it inside this object. I basically just put an object an image inside the content area of the accordion. I can also put text, video, just about anything else you can imagine. The only thing you don't want to put inside a jQuery object is another jQuery object. Let's click F5 and I'll show you how this works. You can see that the content can be displayed or hidden depending on the behavior of the user. And so this is just a quick way to create navigation or just about anything you can imagine where you want to display content in an efficient way on your website. The settings for the jQuery accordion are great because they're simple to use. You can add or remove sections or categories. Here they're called items. And of course you can edit what they say to be whatever you want. You can also change the style of how the accordion behaves. Obviously you can change the font and the padding and all of that stuff. Even the little icons that show next to the words are changeable. There's a whole list of them. But you can also affect the way it's animated. So for example, there are a number of these options here. Some of them very subtle. If for example you choose Ease Out Bounce, and you click on the accordion, you'll notice it just behaves a little bit differently with a little bit of a bounce when it's opened and closed. Other options include making it collapsible. Collapsible means you can toggle them open and closed. That looks like this. So I can actually close the accordion by toggling it open and closed. One other thing you should know about the accordion is that you can set which of the window panes you want to be active when the page loads. That's set over here. So if you set this to zero, it'll actually be the first window. In this case, it would be the products window. If you set it to one, it would be this second item here. So if I wanted it to open up onto item three every time the page loads, I would set it to active two because it's numbered zero, one, two click F5 and when the page loads you'll see that it's this section that's active by default even though you can still have the user change that that's the active or the default panel so let's delete that and go on to the next one the jQuery autocomplete this is a fantastic tool that you might want to use say in one of your forms an autocomplete is basically a field that the user would be filling out but 
it automatically begins to complete, hence the name, as they're filling it out. Let's say we wanted to have a list of words like this. Okay, so I've made my list of words, and I'll click OK. We'll do an F5 to preview and test it. What happens is, as the user begins to type in letters, the autocomplete field makes a suggestion based on the list that I just put in there. So if I start off with this, it will pull from the list the first word that begins with those two letters. Let's talk a little bit about these settings because there's a lot of things you can do with this. First of all, I had to type two letters to pull up a suggestion because that's what's set here. You can change that if you want to. Secondly, you don't have to make your own lists. There are some previously made lists that are common to use. If we go from a list of predefined values, you'll see that we have a bunch of them built in. For example, months of the year. Instead of typing all these out, they're already made for you. Let's get rid of the apple and banana, and I'll demonstrate what that does. So now when the user starts to type in the name of a month, suggestions are made, and they can select that way. Let's move on to the next one. We have a lot to cover. Here's a jQuery button, and this is just a generic button that you can use for a lot of different things. If we double click on it and open up the properties, you can see that we can change what kind of button this is. Right now it's just called a normal button. If you change it to a submit button, this is a kind of button you'd be able to use on one of your forms. So in other words, you'd be able to have more control over what your form submit button looks like because you can style this button just about any way you want to. And remember, it's picking up the jQuery theme from the page. It would be a nicer looking submit button. It can also just be a link. To do that, we would change it to a link button, go to the link, and basically link it to something. We can also decide what it says. And of course, clicking on it would take us to wherever we linked it. Just a great little tool for making a nice button that looks good and has that jQuery feel to it. The jQuery dialog is also a really fun tool to use. This is basically a window that would pop up when your page loads and give your user a message. There's a lot of different things you can do with this. You can edit the title and of course decide what objects go into this particular field here. It can be text, it can be images, it can be anything you want to say to the user when the page opens up. And you can control how this appears and how it goes away. Basically the way a dialog box works is when the page loads, it appears in the middle of the web page, and the user would read this message and then click the close button and see the rest of the web page. It sort of pops up in front of it to give them a message. By double clicking on it, you can change this behavior significantly. Let me show you an example. If you use the modal style, what it does is it brings that window into focus when the page loads. Again, I'll hit F5 to preview. You'll notice what it does is it brings this into the focus in the center and it sort of grays out the background of the web page until the user closes this window, this dialog box. When they close it, then they're back to the page and they can see the content. So you can control how it looks. You can also control how it animates, how it shows, and how it goes away. So for example, when the page opens up, I want this to show maybe with a bounce effect. And when the user hides it, let's have it drop. Of course, we can edit all of these things. Click OK, and you'll see what happens. When the page loads, you see it sort of bounced into place, kind of a fun effect. And when the user makes it go away, it will drop over to the side. So just a really cool trick that you can use on your website to display content when the page first opens up. Let's move this out of the way and delete this and move on to the next thing. The date picker is another really good tool if you're using forms. It does just what you think it would. When the user clicks on this, I'm just gonna go F5 and show you exactly what it does. When the user clicks on this, basically brings up a calendar so that they can pick a date. So if we go like this, it's done. Now you can control what that looks like, again, just like you would imagine, by double clicking on it and changing some of these settings. But you'll notice that the calendar that came up had a particular look to it. That was the jQuery theme, Cupertino. If we chose a different theme, the calendar would match that as well. Again, another great tool if you're making forms and using jQuery objects in them. The jQuery menu is just another sort of navigation item, very simple one. If you double click on it, you can see what it is. You can edit all of these items to be part of a hierarchy or a menu item structure, and each of these items can be a link. Just simply click on it, click the edit button, and decide what it should say and where it should link to, as well as all of the other usual settings. Even the icon that sits next to it in the menu can be chosen from here. 
If you want to add dividers in your hierarchy menu system, you can do that with this button as well. And again, the look of this is set by the jQuery theme. That's a pretty simple tool to use. I'm sure you'll enjoy using it. Some of these tools I'm going to go over in another video because they only apply if you're using what are called events. That's true for the progress bar, the slider, and the spinner. So I'm going to go over those in another video uh, where I show you how to use these in a more advanced way. Let's talk about the jQuery tabs. It's similar to the accordion in that it will display content and text, video, whatever you want in different categories, except instead of an accordion, you're working with tabs. So if we put content into one of these, I'll click F5, you can see that we can tab between these by simply clicking the tabs in sort of a file folder method. You can have a number of these categories. You don't have to just have two. And by the way, let me put another object in here just to show you what this looks like. This time let's put a, a different image right here. Now when we double click on this object, again, we can decide how many tabs we want across the top by adding them here. And what they say can be edited, of course. The style of it is all set here. These can be activated by hovering over them. We don't have to click. We can also use the fade transition effect, which is a nice way to go from tab to tab. And we can make them collapsible. I'll show you what that means. We're going to click OK and demonstrate again by clicking F5 so we can preview the page. The fade effect looks like this. You'll notice that there's a bit of a animation, a nice smooth transition from tab to tab. And collapsible means that if I click on a tab that's already open, the jQuery tabs will collapse and save space. You could actually put content behind this if you wanted to on your website. If I go like this, I go to the other tab. If I click on it again, it collapses and hides. Again, it's picking up its look from the jQuery theme. You can also set these tabs to be on the bottom of this object if you want to. And that looks like this. So let's move these out of the way. Get rid of this. And I'm going to show you one more great jQuery tool. This one's called the jQuery Tool Tip. What this does is this allows you to create a tool tip. You may have seen these on some websites where some information pops up when you hover over another object. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is type in some text. OK, so with my text in here, of course, I can format it any way I want. I'm going to leave it at Arial 8 just for now. And I'm going to click OK to show you what this does. Basically, it doesn't matter where I put this, because this tooltip is going to apply to a particular image on my website. Now, I have two images here, so I have to decide which of these images I want it to apply to. I'm going to have it apply to this e-cover right here. So I'm going to double click again and go back and choose that object, which happens to be image one. Click OK. And now I'm ready to demonstrate. This can sit anywhere on my website. It's actually going to be invisible. In fact, I'll shrink it down and put it up here out of the way. Because what it's actually going to do is this. I'll click F5. The jQuery tooltip I've applied to this image. So anytime the mouse hovers over this, that tooltip is going to come up. And you'll see my text now appears at the top of this image. I can change where it shows in relationship to this image. Of course, it only appears when the user hovers over this image. Now notice that my image actually is in this wider area here, not just the box itself. I'll show you. Let's go back to the canvas. If I click on the image, you can see this is actually the size of the image here. And so the tooltip actually appeared at the top of the image and off to the right. I can decide on that by going back to my jQuery tooltip and changing those settings. I can have it appear in the center and the vertical middle. And I can also choose the offset, how far away it goes from the image. So again, let's try that. We'll click F5. And now when I hover over into my image area, you can see that the tooltip is now in a different location. Just another great feature that you can add to your websites that you're building with 90 Second Website Builder. One other thing I should say about the jQuery tools, there is one other jQuery tool that doesn't appear in this list. It happens to be up in the navigation menu. I won't go over that tool because there's a video about that. But in the navigation menu, you'll see that there is a tool called the Mega Menu. This is technically a jQuery object in that it does pick up its look or its layout and feel by the jQuery page theme, just like the jQuery objects do. So hopefully that gives you a great overview of how powerful the jQuery user interface is to help you really make your websites function at their best and look their finest when you're building your websites in 90 Second Website Builder.